Sometimes you just need a simple sip. Simple sips? Okay. You know, those sips sometimes turn into gulps. Just don't drink too much water. <laughs> I'll take my time. All right. So I guess we can, you know, continue to keep sipping while we're live. Really. What is up, everybody? I'm Mark Monroe, accompanied by my wonderful co-host, good friend, and co-creator and producer, uh, the wonderful... Jolyn GC and the place to be. See? See? You see that? The, the timing. It's all about the timing. So you got to coordinate. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Hot Take Thursday, a show in which that we literally talk about topics that are happening within the market, the economy, and everything in between. And on top of that, how does it impact your portfolio and moving forward for next week? Because clearly it's Thursday. The market is, is going to be on its last leg for the week on Friday. And then we've restarted over on Monday. So you get that. We're going to give you some tools going into next week. And then, of course, you, you have Trade Talk Tuesday next week. But anywho, today's Thursday. So we get to talk about some pretty dope stuff. But let's give a shout out to whoever was first in this oh. chat. And we actually have a surprise today because it's not Jalen. It's not Reggie. We actually have to give a shout out to Nadim. Nadim! Yo, I have not seen Nadim in hella. What's good? I have been seeing Nadim. He's been pretty, he's been pretty active out here. But yeah, at the same token, shout out to you, little bro. We see you out here doing your thing and we see you here first in the chat. Let us know where you're coming from because we definitely want to say what's good to you all and see where you're coming from so that way the world knows. So where are y'all coming from today? Yeah, I was trying to look and see if they spelled something. Not yet. Where are Midwest folks at? Yeah, they still have not spelled that yet. It's hard when there's so many people. Y'all mm. gotta like have this. I'm not gonna tell you how to do it because I, I know how how to, how to get it. See, don't do that. See, you've already gonna... started. You've already started the process. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna shout out Audrey coming all the way from Palm Beach, Florida. We're gonna shout out Antonio coming in from Sacramento. Oh, Antonio, Sacramento, I see you. Uh, JW coming from Hot Atlanta. All right. Uh, Let me shout out. Huh? Let me shout out my Ghana peeps and my Jamaica peeps. What's good, y'all? At the same. <laughs> we have Brian from Trinidad and Tobago. Trinity Bone. Okay, we got Ted from Austin. Uh, we also got Bobby from Richmond, California. We got Ryan from New Orleans. Nola. Speaking of which, since you said Jamaica, we got Carlisle. Or is that Carlisle? Sorry, it's Carlisle. Sorry about that. Hey. Wow, we got, well, if you got like a name that's not really your name, then you know, I'm not gonna probably call it out because it kind of like doesn't make any sense. Um, so we got Michael coming in from Charlotte, North Carolina. North Carolina. <laughs> Somebody said it's never hot, hot Atlanta, bro. <laughs> hey, you know, somebody wrote that in the chat. I'm like Ron Burgundy. I read the screen. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Y'all, we see y'all coming in. We got Sharon coming in from Chicago. Yes. We got A Powers coming in from Netflix, Texas. Interesting. Is that actually a place, Netflix, Texas? No, it ain't. <laughs> Send me a screenshot of the map. I know, right? Somebody sent us a screenshot of a city that's actually called Netflix. That would be very, not, very they just repping. They just but we know, you know. Speaking of which, you know, it's an interesting relationship that I have with Netflix going right now. Really? Mm hmm You care to share? It's, it's too raw right now. I don't want to talk about it right now. Give me some time. Okay. You know, maybe the shades may come on. Maybe another crystal ball moment. Who knows? I'm, just, right. a wall, I'm just a wall of emotion right now. <laughs> a wall of emotion. <laughs> All right. So... Jolene, how are we doing in today's markets today? Because oh, let me take a sip. Because oh, no, okay. I need to calm down. <laughs> I want some real goofy vibes right now. I just feel hella goofy, hella silly right now. So let me. Hey, calm down. 
weekend is about to activate for me. Like, no, it's been nothing but on a on a on a legendary on a legendary walking uh, walking tour for me. All right, yo, what does it, cousins? Jolene, you seen the place to be, repping Soft Bay down to the T. All right, we got hot take Thursday, y'all, and let's talk about what happened with this market. So the Dow was up, the only thing up um, besides being fed up, uh, fifty three point seven nine points. The S&P 500 was negative 14.27 points. The NASDAQ was down negative 101.82 points. The VIX was coming in at 17.01. The 10-year treasury note, yes, I looked it up, was 1.30%. Now for sector performance. As you know, or you should know by now, maybe it's your first time. So if you don't know, there are 11 sectors. We check the top three and the bottom three so we can see what the rotation is looking like. We have utilities, consumer staples, and financials coming in at the top three. Bottom three, consumer discretionary tech and energy. For our pick performance, you can head on over to our Instagram page at that come up series. And you can see um, our picks. It's one of those posts you'll just get that thumb workout, get your scroll on. And coming in at number one, we got Baba, followed by HD, shout out to Kiki, and Visa. Now for our bottom three, we got SMH, NVIDIA, and TSM. Yo, TSM had earnings today too. Um, But you know, you know what? They, they beat, they did beat. However, that guidance will trip you up every time. You got to have strong guidance. If you come out with weak sauce on your guidance, you're going to slip. And TSM definitely slipped a little bit today. I feel um, like my space players know what, what what we just witnessed. But, you know, for anybody who's played the game of spades, tell, tell us what they just did. <laughs> and bag. All right. So, and I don't even play, I don't even play spades. So I just happen to know that because, you know. That's, that's what you'd be talking about. All right. Now, for our 52-week highs, let me just take a sip because this one is always on there. You know, just saying, you know, when you're just it's that good. <laughs> Great. Right. F-T-N-T. And then we got Target, hmm. a.k.a. T-G-T. Hmm. And then we got Apple. Shout out to Apple. Although, you know, did a little pullback. It was like, psych! But it's back. So we'll see. We'll see what it's looking like uh, tomorrow, maybe hmm, next week. It's so close, y'all. It's so close to that 150. Um, and, you know, who would have thought Apple at 150 here in July? <laughs> Shout out to XLK and XLY as well, because even on a red day, your parents hold you down. They just hold you down, giving out allowance, you know, saying yes to all your requests. It's all good. I'm just right, saying, so there was a, there's this old Southern quote that said, God is still a good God, even on a, good, even on a bad day. <laughs> Always. All right. So let me get into it. I'm, I'm ready. Wait, how did we do on the U.S. tenure? Hello, I said 1.30%. Okay, okay. Right. <laughs> See, that's just, wait, did you see the comment in the, did you see the, you know, like comment? On I that? did not. I was going to wait till the end. Why? People, no, y'all need to like right now. Okay, help that algorithm. I was trying something new. I was trying something new. All right, y'all. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. And if you like the video, that would greatly help this channel. But if you don't, that's okay. You can just tell us how it is that we can get better because we definitely read the comments. And on top of that, if you want to be in the know, go ahead and hit the notification bell. So that way you can be a part of the notification squad, aka the Cool Kids Club. Cool. Um, I do have to say this. Okay, so earlier today, I was, and even, I guess, kind of like this week, I was just, you know, watching, um, <clears throat> you know, different market shows and whatever. And all I have to say is, it is so lackluster. Oh, my gosh. It is so boring. Like, people's backgrounds be whack. You know, like random objects in the background, like no pizzazz, no personality, just dry. Oh my gosh. So I just want to shout out you, Mark, and also shout out myself um, for keeping it fun, bright, and, and energetic. So, yeah. Folks are asking me what's in my cup. 
Mm-hmm. Not sponsored. Yeah. <laughs> Not sponsored at all. This is not an endorsement. It's just more so for y'all to know that, hey, I take my job as it pertains to giving you guys knowledge very serious, and I can't be sloshed doing that. So this is water. Yeah, only on a only on a on a special <laughs> on a weekend when we celebrate a milestones. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so Mark. Okay, so as you know, on Thursdays. Sometimes Wednesdays, usually not, but on a Thursday, you know, I like to post in my on my IG stories asking folks what news they want to talk about for Hot Take Thursday. Yeah. And we have some things. Um, there's common themes. Y'all are pretty much on the same accord. So that's interesting. That's very, very interesting. So we're just gonna do this. Um I think we should probably get into earnings first. Okay. And then go through um, some of these other other questions. So, do we want to do earnings before I I'm, I take it that everybody wants to know about TSM? So. Yeah, <laughs> there was at least ten questions about TSM earnings. So. Right. So, um, if you didn't know, so TSM pretty much uh, beat on its top line EPS, and then its revenue came in a little bit light, and then of course its guidance was just non-spectacular now the interesting thing is is that he, there's a little bit of a mix up here and i think that that's what caused confusion for investors because investors were like well hey wait a minute we just heard that apple was telling its suppliers to increase production by 20 percent, not 30 which i don't know where people are getting that from but 20 percent, mm-hmm. and so that's 20 percent higher than what they did in 2020 which if you know about 2020 2020 was a super cycle for the iphone as well as some other products, but really the iPhone last year. And so they're saying that, hey, we're going to need to increase now. That's going to be interesting, especially given that we've had a chip supply shortage and a few other things. And Taiwan has also had a little bit of a drought season as it pertains to water, if you've been paying attention. By the way, shout outs to my guy, Eli, for giving me this book. It's pretty much Water Futures, which it's a beautiful read, by the way. Um, But... Anyway, getting back into it. So when we see that, you know, TSM's guidance came in a little bit light and then at the same token, it's like it's contradictory to what we're hearing from Apple. It really makes people wonder like, okay, hey, is TSM going to be all right? Or is Apple looking at, you know, using a different supplier or what's really going on here? So I think that the market got a little bit spooked there. And then on top of that, we're going to get into a few other things like, for example, a lot of folks thought that it had something to do with Jay Powell, but actually Jay Powell did everything that he could to literally keep the markets in order and like moving forward, single line, nothing to see here. Y'all keep it moving. Um, and then essentially we got some other bad news that also tacked onto that. So then ultimately the market just said, you know, what the heck with it. We're done. <laughs> but so let's get into TSM's uh, earnings, shall we? Yes. So going to their quarterly results, let's see here. They have this beautiful thing called presentation material. So I'll just share this with everybody um, while doing this presentation. And please forgive me. I I guess apparently we have a dog uh, that is not getting the type of love that they're accustomed to. (laughs) Um, Is that him making that noise? It is. Oh, what'd you do to Butter? Uh, Butter is over, yo, Butter is, you see him right there? That is Butter right there living his best life. So, all right, so let's get into it. So here we are with TSM's uh, earnings, uh, quarterly earnings conference. Move this out of the way, because it's a little annoying. Okay, so let's get to it. So as we see it, let's look at some of the statements. So we pretty much, it's misnomer. Um, so as you can see that their earnings as it pertains to net revenue came in at 13.29 billion. Net revenue was at 372 uh, and million. Uh, gross margin was at 50%. So I think that their guidance was about 40. Yep, yeah, their guidance was 49 and a half to about 51 and a half. I'm probably sure that that came in a little bit light, especially given that they were at 52 and almost 52 and a half. And then quarter three, you know, 53 for if we looked at the same quarter. So 53% versus 50%. So we came in a little bit underneath 
Uh, operating margin was at 39%, though that they're expecting that those percentages should be a little bit better. But this right here, the market does not like. So the market doesn't like this. The market did not like this. And especially when you're compared against last year's performance. Mm -hmm. So that's something to keep in mind. And then, of course, net profit margin, there's typically no uh, guidance here, but it's showing you 36 versus 38.9%. And also versus 38.6%. So, of course, you're starting to see the effects there. So, of course, revenue by technology. So, you can see that their five nanometer and their seven nanometer process are some of their heaviest hitters, but then you can't exclude the 16 and the 28. So, I'm probably sure that their high performance, yep, their high performance computing, as well as their smartphone chips, uh, was something to behold, of course. So, 42% of their revenue still comes from that. And then the other comes from high performance computing. That's pretty much like your PCs, laptops, uh, and desktop computers. And then your Internet of Things, that's like your Amazon Alexas and all those other devices. And then automotive, as you're starting to see, represents 4% of their revenue with a few other things that are there. So if we look at it, growth rate by platform quarter over quarter, smartphone came down by 3%. But meanwhile, high performance computing and automotive were the best performers. Now, of course, DCE, though, it's like it doesn't really do a good job of telling us exactly what that is. But, you know, if somebody wants to look it up, feel free to do so, um, as well as other uh, up 4%. So essentially, they had a few things that were essentially down, like Internet of Things and smartphones and uh, DCE. So. Um, based on, uh, so here's where it really came into perspective. So based on our current uh, business outlook, management expects revenue to be uh, between US 14.6 billion and 14.9 billion, not bad. And based on the exchange rate assumption of one US dollar to 27.9, uh, we expect a growth profit margin to be between 49 and a half to 51 and a half. And then of course, like what I just read. So Wall Street did not like this at all. They did not like the guidance. And remember what I talk about when we when we speak on behalf of guidance, you could have a great quarter or a solid, decent quarter. But yet at the same token, if your guidance is something in which that is not expected to reflect the same amount of in that same energy when it comes to a great quarter, expecting another great quarter, uh, that typically doesn't really sit well with Wall Street. So essentially, you can see that, you know, I mean, I feel like it was a little bit overkill in the sell off for TSM. But, you know, hey, whatever. Uh, so pretty much recap any of major events. Mm. NXP ramps automotive processing innovation with two processors on TSM. OK, uh, TSM board. Nobody cares, really, because honestly, this thing happens like every quarter. TSM announces 10 candidates for board of directors. So a lot of board of directors activity. And that's pretty much it. I mean, non-eventful, very cut and dry quarter for TSF. And so, I mean, honestly, decent quarter, but terrible guidance. Mm. Okay, so <clears throat> next question we have coming up here. Um, so, Mark, I know you had mentioned it earlier about being emotional, um, you know, but the people have questions about this, um, the Netflix news um, and the gaming and all that. So, you know, be, please put on a brave face and can we discuss like what the impact on Netflix is going to be future, what you see for them going forward. And I mean, feel free to talk about, you know, any credit that you think needs to be given or, you know, anything like that. Go ahead. Let it out, Mark. Let it out. <laughs> I can't. It's the dramatics for me. <laughs> I just want to say this to Netflix. Congratulations. I'm sure that you guys probably had somebody in representative of the organization that said, you know, hey, we have a bright idea after listening in on a few clubhouse conversations, you know, last year, you know, though that you say that you've been in, this has been in the works, but, you know, we never saw any of the hiring. You know, I'll give you the store thing. That's, that's, that's fair. But, you know, honestly, I feel some kind of way about, you know, this whole gaming thing, because, you know, I, I really wasn't joking there. I feel I feel like there's a strong upside there. But, you know, the question is, who are they going to partner with? Um, so, I mean, I think that honestly, I don't think that there'll be a triple A game titles. I think that they'll probably be like the, the independent indie uh, game titles, which is dope. Um, I'm just feeling some kind of way about it, because 
I'm glad that you listened on one end, but I mean, dang, can a brother get his reparations for an idea? Like, what more do you want from me? Like, really, what more do you want from me? I mean, but you know, that's all shade aside. <laughs> all shade aside. I mean, I think the biggest thing that we could take away here is that NVIDIA does listen and you realize that there is revenue out there that you're missing out on and that sooner or later you're going to need to have somewhat of another growth story because i guess you're you're coming towards it's in an s curve and on top of that you're doing a good job of you know think about it like the witcher you know spider-man you know a few other things that are coming out of the pipeline which we expect um you know it'd be interesting if you also come up with an assassin's creed because ubisoft they got hits especially like watchdogs so you could create a tv show off of that you know and partner up um, but I mean, honestly, it's like, you know, just donate it to a wonderful charity, you know, and say that, you know, Hey, we were listening, you know, honestly, we can leave it there. You know, I'll just, I'll just stay in witness protection and yeah, rant complete. All right. So we have some questions about the market expectations. Um, so the question is, what would be the market expectations after COVID unemployment assistance runs out? And you're frozen. Yo, you're gonna have to restart your um, computer or take that AI off before we go live because you're frozen. All right, well, I guess this is how it's going to be. I can't tell if Mark is talking while I'm talking because um, it's not coming in on this side. Um, Tivo, I'm going to ask you to come out from the background. Just answer, can you hear me? Yeah. OK. All right. OK, so well, we'll wait for Mark to come back. He'll join us. OK, so we have some other questions here. Um, one question was, which sites does Mark read to know the market so well? So one of the things that you can do is with your iPhone, if you have an iPhone, um, you can set up your Apple News alerts. And on that, what you'll do is look at all the companies from all the um, ETFs that you may be interested in. So like XOK, XLY, um, even ARC, any of those, SMH, obviously those, and then you can set alerts um, for news. And as you um, set your alerts for the news, it will curate like a, almost like your own personal newspaper. And then that way, as you're reading, um, when you look at your app, you're able to get like a briefing of all of the um, topics that you would be interested in um, to keep track of. So that's how you can stay on top of the news. Um, Mark, the question was, which sites um, do you read to know the market so well? So I was just talking about how you can set up Apple um, news alerts um, to gather your news. Also, um, if you want to pay for a subscription or, you know, maybe go in with some cousins, um, you can get Zacks. Um, that's helpful to know more in depth about companies and market um, analysis and things like that for the different companies. You can also read earnings reports, those sorts of things. Um, anything else, Mark, you want to add to um, how you know the market so well? Like, what can the cousins do to stay on top of things? You're muted, Mark. You're muted. I'm back. I'm back. Hey. Okay. <laughs> All right. So here are some of the fa my favorite news places. I like to read places like Investor Place. I love to check out Market Watch. <laughs> I definitely love to read Barron's, but then at the same token, here's a cheat code for everybody, especially if you use a platform like E-Trade. So one of the things that you can use is within Power E-Trade, there's a place in which that if you just go to, I think it's under trading and then go to Power E-Trade, you can use this thing called news. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do something even further today. I'm gonna show people what it looks like. Exciting news. Oh Lord. Here we go. <laughs> now, of course, for me, a lot of times I use E-Trade Pro, but I mean, honestly, it's a good start for everybody. So one of the things that I love to use is this. So when you're going through this, then essentially you can actually pull up any stock. So for example, I could pull up, you know, an NVIDIA corporation. And then from there, I have all the most up-to-date news in which that's happening 
within the company like NVIDIA. And then of course I can filter it, I can do whatever. And then of course I can also watch Bloomberg TV television though I don't. Um, but it's a great place because it sources out a lot of information from not only just like Forbes and stuff like that, but you also get it from like the street, Dow Jones and everywhere else. And of course it's free. So now some of the times when you come across some of these sites, you may have to say, for example, they try to may loop you into a subscription, but the best place to ultimately get all of your news, especially if you put together your watch list of news as it pertains to categories that you follow is Apple news. And for Android users, don't feel left out because there's Google news. So for me, I, some of the things that I have in my search uh, or in my, in my section of where is it that I research, I definitely have financial markets. I look at technology, I look at uh, electric vehicles. Uh, I also look at venture capital markets because it gives me an idea of what's coming down the pipeline, what deals are being had right now, who's getting Series B to, or Series A to Series F funding. Uh, so it gives me a good pulse. Um, and then on top of that, some of the things I also look at is startups. I look at economics. So I look at global economies. So those are the things that I do. And it gives me a consor It gives me pretty much a great, well-rounded consortium of a bunch of news topics. And here is also another extra thing that I do. In the morning, I'm checking it. And before I go to bed, I'm also reading it. So majority of the time that I spend, majority of the stuff that I do throughout the day is I'm reading up on news. And then based upon what I can do is I can now kind of like foresee things based upon what is it that I read it gives me a clear idea. And it's really just based upon your imagination. Your, you know, pretty much your, your view of the future is only the limit of your imagination. So if you see exactly what you, and based upon what you know from the company on a fundamental standpoint, what they're capable of and what they're doing, you can take into consideration the news. And first you have to use your BS filter to see exactly, okay, hey, is this actual fact or is this fiction? And then from there, when you've been able to decipher between the two, then you take that into consideration and say, all right, well, where does, it, where does this place us in the grand scheme of things if we're developing a roadmap to the future? And that's ultimately how investors see it. They don't just look at what's in front of them. They look at, okay, hey, how does this impact the, the strategy for the road ahead? And that's honestly how I get good at it. That was, that was dope. Um, another thing that I like that I just started listening to um, maybe a couple months ago is uh, Seeking Alpha's Wall Street Breakfast. I mm -hmm. like, it comes out about maybe 5.30 a.m. or so. So I do, I do Thoughts on the Market by Morgan Stanley. I, I listen to that one too. Um, but yeah, like the, doing that one. the Wall Street uh, Breakfast one, I like it because, well, I like the intro music. <laughs> Number one. It's like, <laughs> It was like classical music. So, you know, you just, you know, it's a good way to wake up. And um, also they have, not only do they have the podcast, but then they also have the written part as well. So um, you get that in your email if you have Seeking um, Alpha. Uh, and then they also have something on the weekend too, like just like, oh, so what happened in the market this week or whatever. So I like that. I like the, the summary vibes. Of it. And they only focus on like maybe the top three things for the day. So, mm -hmm. so I like that too. All right. I mean, you get to a point where it's like sooner or later, you can actually like get to a point where you could just like read the headlines mm -hmm. and then you can just be like, all right, well, this confirms essentially what I know. Mm -hmm. What I really look for is I actually look for things that are actually contrary to my thesis and I read those. Because the stuff that's already like confirming what is it that I already know, it's like, what's the point of reading that one? Because I already know it. Yeah. Unless you just want to, you know, oh, good job, Mark. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but also on Seeking Alpha, they have like their articles divided. So it'll be like they immediately let, immediately let you know that person's biased. So they're like, this, this is a bear. This person's bullish. This person's neutral. So that helps when you're just trying to scroll through. Like you want to just read like everything bearish about your position or what have you and on top of that you can always go to zach's i mean though that it's not 100 free and bar chart is not 100 free but they give you news there uh that's curated towards say for example specific, specific uh positions but i mean yeah it's like try using your brokerage platform especially yeah. i think thinkorswim should have it uh charles schwab should have it and honestly you know Utilize the resources that you're already using that already take your money it's for you to literally build your generational wealth. They should actually have those resources. Yes, for free 99. Well, 
you pay it when you pay your commission fees, but you know, yeah. it's there. So use it. Just like Z Jolene, did you know that you get free Morgan Stanley analyst research reports on e and being an E-Trade customer? Mm -hmm. And did you know that also if you're with Fidelity, thanks to shout out to TiVo, you get free Zacks? I didn't know that part about the free Zacks on Fidelity. I pay for Zacks. To me, it's worth it. Like I like Zacks. So Bye. yeah, I just go on ahead and take my money, Zacks. Um, oh, by the way, Simply Wall Street. Oh, yes. I like Simply Wall Street, too. Yeah, hopefully people like that site. You know, I like it. Okay, so moving on. Let's talk about Apple. So remember how we were talking about earlier how Apple, um, how it's so convenient to pay with Apple Pay? Like, so convenient. It's just like, boop, tap, boop, tap, you know? And this was like pre, pre-COVID vibes. I was already already on it so you know mark you know they beefing up their services now and partnering again with goldman sachs you know they partnered with goldman sachs for the apple card um and when i got my apple card i was so excited because they actually let me put my name on there jolin gc they didn't ask for any like official government so I was like, y'all are cool or whatever. But okay, so now they're doing the whole thing coming for, what is it, Affirm with that uh, buy now, pay later. So Mark, what do you want to say about Apple and their uh, services and stepping stepping on toes out here? I'm just going to say to the consumers, aka y'all cousins, be, care be careful with this buy now, put pay later. Don't ever buy something that you don't have the money to actually pay for it in your bank. That's the first thing. Uh, so if you ain't got cash, don't pay for it on credit because ultimately that's just a setup for yourself. And ultimately you're putting yourself in bondage. So that's the first rule of thumb. Okay. Second thing, um, essentially I could see that this was coming because of course it's like, you know, look at the economics report. The economics report literally told you that essentially that consumer credit was up. So essentially people are more so using their credit during for, from during the pandemic and even to now especially if money is getting a little bit tight and everything else people should definitely be focused on that so it makes sense that essentially that we're in this buy now pay later type of mantra i mean it's kind of funny because we typically see this it's like you know once upon a time you saw it with payday loans and now you're seeing it with buy now pay later so interesting um but i mean I feel bad for a firm because, but the thing is, is that the question is, is that I think that they're already, they're going for the folks in which that are in the high, uh, that are in the high money-making uh, arena. Because of course, I think that if you look at Apple Pay's card requirements, mm -hmm. I think that they set them pretty high, especially if you're working with a company like Goldman Sachs. Um, so that's just something to be mindful of. But though it's like, it's just another revenue stream for Apple, though that I don't think it's going to be that tough or that big for them. But it's just something in which that they can loop you into the ecosystem, whether it's buying products through Apple or essentially just getting those transaction fees alongside with Goldman Sachs. So I don't know specifically what the deal is, because, of course, they're typically in the hush hush there. Um, but I'm probably sure that Apple's getting a fair shake of this deal and Goldman Sachs is just, you know, collecting rent. Um, but I feel bad for a firm, though I don't really, because honestly, it's like I feel like their platform is a little bit flawed. And of course, with the interest rates that they apply towards folks. Um, a firm charges interest? I thought that was the whole point, that there is no fees. Remember, if there's no fees, then how do they stay in existence? Right, but like, what are the fees then? Where are they coming from? Uh, probably on the backside of things, where essentially the price may be possibly baked in. Mm. So you bake it into the price. So the way that you can do that is go check out what the retail price is versus say, for example, what the affirm price payments over time look like and see if they add up. Okay. So they may not tell you that we're charging you extra fees on top of that, but it's interesting because of the fact that if you do that, now, of course, it's like, we should probably bring in Q because he's a credit genius as it pertains to credit cards. He is. You know, I'm really going like, to some cards now. Yo, for real, for real. Uh, <laughs> so, but I'm just thinking like, you know, their, their fees are definitely baked in because if not, then how is it that you stay in existence and how is it that you make money? Yeah. And they partner with certain folks too. Yeah. So yeah. I can shout see out, shout, out, shout, shout out to all the Peloton folks out there that use the firm. Speaking of Peloton, Mark, yeah. it arrives on Saturday. 
Oh, word. <laughs> well. I was going to send you a FaceTime while I was in it. <laughs> like, <that's funny. laughs> Your girl's going to be out here cycling. All right. So next question. We have... Oh, here's a question about Tan. We don't talk too much about Tan, the solar ETF, but it says, um, Tan, what is dragging it? China regulations on solar parts? COVID impact on supply chain? No the lack of an infrastructure bill? bill? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, the whole reason why we saw Tan bounce to the upside was because of the fact that there was this anticipation of a infrastructure bill. Now... You know, six months later, we still have our seven. Well, I guess, can we really count se- July? Can we really count seven months since July hasn't passed yet? You know, I'm, no, trying, to, I'm trying to milk all the benefits of July because, you know, greatness in July. Um, but <sighs> it hasn't come yet. And if it ain't here, then it's like, you know, what's the point of being invested into it? So people are like, okay, hey, you know, energy, solar energy and everything else ain't worth nothing if you know, if there's no money that goes towards it. So essentially it's like, you know, think about all the buyers that are supposed to be buying all these solar panels with the anticipation of tax credits. Well, if there are no tax credits, there's going to be a lot of folks that are sitting there pissed because know that you're sustainable, but yet at the same token, your pockets may not be as sustainable because of the fact that you took that heavy cut. Um, Same thing goes with the EV market space. So essentially there's a lot of folks out there anticipating EV tax credits for electric vehicles and purchases in which that they did this year. So yeah, that's, that's the main big thing. I mean, China is, China is small fry in comparison to everything else. It really boils itself down to, you know, really that infrastructure bill. Okay. Okay. So next question we have is, well, this is a comment. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it says art and AMD need to get on XLK kind of time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually, you know, I'm gonna do something that's a little bit unprecedented today. All right, go for it. You know, I think we should show a chart today. I'm with it. All right, so let's open up uh, Trading View on my end. Give me a second, y'all, because I know you're like, we can't see your screen. Don't worry, it's coming. So I'm going to pull up. Now, the interest, there's been some interesting behavior. Now, what you're going to see on my screen, let me see it. Okay. I'm taking it back to the old school here because I feel like it's time for us to kick it a little bit old school when it comes to some of these things. So what I mean by kicking it old school, when I first started off as a trader, there was three things that I ultimately kept on my, ch- on my chart. I kept the 50-day moving average. I kept the 200-day moving average as well as the RSI just to see exactly where we were. Now, in looking at it, the RSI, for anybody that just needs a refresher, RSI, when it's in the levels of 30 or, you know, in that range, then that's letting you know that something is oversold. When it's at the 70s and above or 70 to 80, that's overbought. So clearly, if we roll the clock back just a little bit or look at a year to date, here's year to date for ARC. So, of course, it had a massive run, but then essentially it's kind of like just been trading off to the side. So we're at the halfway. We're a little bit underneath where we were, which was... If you think about it, ARC started off at, I think it was like 124 at the beginning of the year, and then essentially made it all the way up to its high at about 156. And then essentially it's been sitting here at 160. Well, it came down to 116. Now, interesting thing is we've been trading at, when we were going to somewhat of an upside, the blue represents the 50 day moving average. So we hit this uh, death cross back in June. But the interesting thing here is if we look at a one year chart, we're experiencing some, we went through this period of experiencing lower lows, but now we're at the, now we're experiencing lower highs. So we came back to this level where we just pinged the 50 day moving average. Of course, we easily blew past the 200 day. And the reason why you blew past that is because of the fact that, I mean, it's very clear we're in a debt, we went towards a death cross, but we're in a part where we're starting, we're going to probably start to see a swell where we converge. Now, if we just take some simple, info lines here and where we were at 130 to where we are down here, then you can really say that ARC is now officially in correction territory. Now, it's very interesting because if I pull up, you know, our dear friend Roku here, we will also see that Roku is also in correction territory. So essentially, our, it, it, 
ARC has corrected. And then of course, if we pull up Tesla, Tesla also from its quote unquote high, which was here, is down not in correction territory, but we're getting to a point where we're gonna probably start seeing a convergence here. And where we start to see that this 50 day moving average will come back again and cross back over the 200 day moving average back to a golden cross. And so it's very, very interesting. And I'll give everybody a bonus ad here to look at the NASDAQ composite, because here's some things to take into consideration. Kind of looks a lot similar to some of the other charts that we just saw. But notice this, as we look at it year to date, notice exactly where the NASDAQ tends to ping across the line. And if you go looking at it historically, it's very rare that it comes down to these lower 30s, very, very rare. But for the most time, it typically comes down to these to these mid 50s to lower 50s, and then essentially it runs back. So that would be something that I would be looking to watch and moving forward, just as a little piece of homework for everybody for the weekend. Alrighty, moving along here. Um, here's a question. Sorry, I, there was multiple questions from this person. Okay, why yeah. does FTNT outperform other cybersecurity firms? I will say this, uh, something that you should look at is a, a good way to do a, a quick comparison contrast is go look at one, their business model. Um, so which business model is stronger? FTNT has been around for a minute. I mean, for a lot of folks don't realize it's actually, F it's actually an S&P 500 company. So there's that. And so essentially it's like they've, and also go and read their first quarter earnings report or actually go read their Q4 earnings report from 2020 and then go read that and then cross-reference that and compare that to say, for example, either a CrowdStrike or a Zscaler. And that will tell you everything that you need to know as it pertains to why it's been outperforming everybody else. Okay. Um, same, another question in that same vein um, from the same person. Why SMH over SOXX? Oh, because I like the way that SMH moves as it pertains. So like it kind of gives me the feel of a stock versus the feel of, an, of a true ETF. That's why. Yeah, when SMH got the act right, it has that act right. It moves faster than XOK. Like, but the thing with XOK though, it can move a little bit, and that has a big impact. Big impact. Yeah. So. But TSM, when it moves big, I mean, clearly, TSM was down. I think today at the at the height, I think it was like down by almost nine bucks a share. It was down, down. Yeah. What? So that totally. Everybody sometimes they're sitting there waiting for an entry into positions. You just have to figure out exactly like, okay, hey, what am I seeing here? Mm -hmm. You know, some things may be a, re a quick reaction by investors or folks that are like automatically thinking that the house is on fire. When in reality, the house is not on fire. It's just probably just being reconstructed or being remodeled. Yeah. So. So you know, which is a great reason why part of my decision. Besides, you know, just encouraging SMH to get that act right. Um, SMH, you know, is my stock bay, as you can see. And it really is, for me, it's all conviction. Like mm -hmm. all the top chip companies in um, SMH, I see, I see them, you know, performing well. And so that only bodes well more for SMH. Um, and even though it's down right now, you know, I don't average down. So I'm just... I, I don't, I don't do that. Like SMH would have to come like way, way down for me to even consider it. But I know that this is, you know, temporary and it will get back on the get back. So, and also like not looking at these um, stocks and things like that at, as weeklies, if you're looking at them like, oh, it didn't do that well today. It's like, hello, this is, you know, give it some time. There's going to be like little bumps in the road, but you know, you got to I'll say this for everybody out there that is ultimately wanting to be a short term trader. Mm. Um, remember this. I think I said this a while back, but I'll reiterate it for folks in which that are new to the to the channel or just, you know, just need a refresher. Don't go for things in the short term if you can't handle the smoke. Mm. 
Say it again, Mark. Say it one more time. <laughs> Don't go for the short. Do not go for the short term trades if you if you can't handle the smoke. If you really can't handle the smoke, then stay away. <laughs> If you can handle that and then you can ultimately be okay with yourself, even when, say, for example, whether you're right or you're wrong on such a trade, that's different. But if that's not what your speed is and if that's not the way that your heart is set up, then honestly, stop trying to, like I always say that there's a lot of folks out there, especially our community knows this better than anybody else. There's a lot of folks out there that try to portray and be something that they're not. And then essentially until the smoke comes and then ultimately it's like, now it's like, all right, well, this is not who I am. And then ultimately like, Hey, what do I do? If that's not who you are, then don't be that. There's more than enough time for later on down the road. You can learn, you can also pay for trade in the process, but stop trying to be something in which that you're not like, especially if you do not have that type of stomach for risk, or if your funds don't have that type of stomach for risk, then don't do it. Don't do it. All investments, all investments or all trades are risk. When I say this, investments carry a risk, but at the same token, you're holding for the long term if you're buying stock. If you're trading in the options market, then ultimately you're carrying on ex an exorbitant amount of risk. And at the same token, the goal here is the reason why we try to tell y'all whether you're investing in the long term or trading in the long term, it's the goal to focus on de-risking yourself and instead of trying to do all these glorious rainmaker trades that wall street bets may show you where it's like okay hey this person became a boss at this but you know let's not let's not fool ourselves and think that okay hey a lot of these folks some of these folks may be actually winning but the vast majority of them are actually losing and they're losing because of the fact that they're chasing this you know this allure of what say for example somebody else has done and thinking that they can go and re and pretty much recreate that. And that's not how the market works. So essentially it's like, yo, if, the, if you're not the type of person that can drive hundred miles per hour and be okay when the state, when you pass a state patrol car, then maybe just maybe you need to stay at the speed limit and ultimately say, all right, well, that's, this is my speed and be okay with that. And not in the left-hand lane, stay in that right-hand lane. <laughs> so you can make way for the other people. Yo, I'm just saying like, yo, if you are, yo, I, I, that's a firm test right there. Here, here's another test. I always tell folks like if you ball in like that or if you or if you got that type of energy, you know, I, I, to quote D. Ray Davis, everybody wants to pop bottles in, in the club. Yo, go, go and go and pay four hundred dollars on gas and just go waste it. <laughs> Point set match. Just don't, don't add the match to the gasoline, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, question. <laughs> Sorry, some of these questions be funny. So one says, <laughs> what happened to my girl? No video. <laughs> um, nothing. I mean, ultimately, NVIDIA needed to come down. It, it definitely needed to take a break. I mean, a lot of these stocks definitely needed to take breathers. I mean, especially within the short term, they were running hot. I mean, the thing that we should be, you know, applauding them for is the fact that, hey, that they're holding at specific levels. I mean, it's not like you're seeing the NASDAQ go down by 300 points in one day. You know, I think that those days are kind of like coming to closer towards its end unless it's like during correction time. But you, what you've just seen was a healthy pullback. And we're going into earnings. So some folks want to take profit before earnings, especially a lot of investment uh, institutional investors or institutional money managers. They want to take profit because of the fact that maybe they want to repurpose, reposition into something else. I mean, I think also people got spooked today because of the fact of what they heard from the CDC and, and the World Health Organization. The fact that you're seeing an astronomical amount of folks that are ultimately becoming uh, sick from the Delta variant. And then on top of that, you got Lambda. I mean, shoot, somebody said it best. It's like this virus is creating its own little fraternity or sorority with all these letters. But I mean, I think the biggest thing here is just that the market got spooked. It had nothing to do with Jay Powell because he stayed the course of what he, he said, what he said yesterday. He said what he said uh, a quarter ago, a month ago. And on top of that, he's remained on course. So it's like, I don't understand why is it that people keep asking the same question? So now it's just a matter of the market trying to realize, okay, hey, well, if folks are, if we see that companies are having to wait, raise their wages, 
who's making them do that? Well, now we can look towards the federal government because of the fact is, is that you have a lot of folks that are backed by stimulus and now they have to go to companies and say, hey, you have to at least match this or do better than this. And a lot of companies aren't willing to do that. So it makes sense for people to stay home. Um, speaking of that Delta variant, um, someone asks, is there a potential shutdown again with the Delta variant on the rise? Could there be another shutdown? I mean, you're already starting to see shutdowns in certain places. Like, for example, I mean, one of the biggest threats, especially to some of the companies that are out there in the market is, I mean, look at what's happening in Tokyo, Japan, you know, for the Tokyo Olympics, no spectators. So which means you're an athlete, you do that, you do whatever it is that you do. And then when you lose, you go home. Like, it's literally like that. You don't get to stay and watch the event. No. And then on top of that, it's like we're hearing about some athletes uh, going through the health protocol and possibly being sent home. Like certain countries just don't play no games. And honestly, it's like it makes sense. So essentially, a lot of those companies are going to have to a lot of those companies are going to have to either look they're going to be either looking for refunds or essentially, you know, some type of hey reimbursement back. Or essentially, they're just going to have to take the loss. It's going to be a very, very interesting thing to see exactly who's taking losses, especially when they wanted to reach out to all of those people who would, who are going to be travelers and tourists during the time of the Olympics. And now that that's not there, that's a loss of revenue. So now the question is, who's vulnerable? And the market is definitely trying to sniff that out. So um, there was a question here. Um, there was an article on CNBC um the title was Yellen sees several more months of rapid inflation before easing um worries about housing impact um and the cousin had a question about um about the impact of the rising um inflation mm -hmm. um or like rapid inflation rather um and what that might what that might do to the market as far as like housing and whatnot I mean, it's very interesting to watch because for those out there, go check out the real estate market. Like, go check out how much that they performed, the real estate sector, I should say, the real estate sector and see how they performed throughout the year. Now, normally the real estate sector is very quiet, very underperforming, but apparently this year, look at companies like Lennar, look at companies like, you know, Toll Brothers, all those companies. Look at how they're up, like, say, for example, almost 30% uh, across the board, up 50% or some change across the board. And it's like really what helped them was the fact of inflation due to lumber costs going high and essentially being able to price some of those into their margins for, say, for example, the sale of homes, and especially given that you have limited inventory. I mean, there's something there to be said. Another thing that people need to be looking at is the value of the dollar. So essentially the dollar, the low value of the dollar does make the U.S. equities attractive, but for how long? And then, of course, the question is, hey, how far, how far low are we going to drop as it pertains to Treasury yields? You know, especially with the Fed saying, hey, we're not budgeting. Yeah, we see that, you know, and, and here's the main part that people need to understand. When you have people or when you have the entire world go to a standstill, it's one thing if it's a small area within manufacturing that goes to a standstill. But when you have the entire world go to a standstill and then essentially you expect them to just pick up where they left off and just act like nothing has gone wrong, you're mistaken things become inflated because of the fact is the demand never, the, the, the demand will not stop. So demand rose, but yet supply became very limited. And when supply becomes limited, then that rose the price as it pertains to inflation. So again, if the demand is still high within the real estate market, but the supply inventory is low. And especially when we think about the materials, the cost of the materials being high, then you start to see areas in real estate. Now, as mortgage rates start to, when they start to roll back on mortgage rates, when mortgage rates get higher, then you'll start to see those home values drop. I'm gonna just go out here on a bold projection and say 2022, you possibly may see a wrecking ball come to the real estate market. Mm -hmm. You may possibly see a wrecking ball come to real estate because nobody is going to ultimately be exempt from this. And I think that honestly, you can look at real estate as one of those, which is next, because I don't think that we've seen it yet, especially when you think about, for example, the amount of, say, for example, folks that are that are in foreclosure, you know, that are ultimately being you know, held off at bay. When you think about rent, 
And, you know, a lot of those, uh, you know, landlords that are, you know, they're, they're mandated to have to keep tenants there, especially during financial hardship times, you know, sooner or later, you know, that's going to come to its end. And then that is all going to have to be sorted and how things get sorted. It normally hurts first before it, it sorts itself out. So something to be mindful of. A lot of folks are out there buying houses at the high, which doesn't make any sense to me, but you know, I understand a home is a home and it's a hearth for some folks. And, but I, I, I definitely say that, you know, we could possibly be seeing in 2022 that where we could be seeing a drop. Okay, so we have three minutes left. Um, there was a question, a really quick question. Um, the strike price math have to be adjusted when purchasing on third and fourth quadruple witching of the year. Um, in the third and fourth quadruple witching, so that would place you at September and December, if I'm correct. I mean, September is typically a low month, so ultimately you're going to have to adjust it anyways because of the fact that you could probably be in the midst of correction or on the verge of correction, because that's typically around the time of correction. December, I mean, we typically rise back up, so you probably may need to weather a little bit of your expectations. It's okay to shave off when it comes to percentages of pullbacks, especially if you expect one in March. But if you're already coming through in the month of September, then it's kind of like priced in. But ultimately, here's a little secret about the strike price formula. Um, really, it's really the percentages over the year over year. I mean, if you really think about it, most of your stocks average about a 15 to 18% return year over year. If you look at the strike price formula, it kind of like cooks that in for you. So that way you can kind of think about, okay, hey, I'm weathered expectations a little bit. If you're doing it the right way. Now, if you're going like for some high pie in the sky, like high risk, that's different. But if you're keeping it within a weathered expectation, if you really do think about it, the strike price formula really takes into consideration about a 15 to 20% average return year over year for a stock. So if you're playing that over a two year, then that's really about a 15 to two, 15 to 20% over, or really a 40 or what is that? A 30 to 40% move over two year, over a two year period. And if you think about it, most of your average stocks today, they typically outperform that. So again, it's about weathered expectations. Well, that's all we have time for today. There were, well, we'll get, you know, if your question didn't get answered, you can put in the rotation for next week. If you resubmit it, we'll try and get that answered. Um, but well, yeah. I'll be different when I see you guys next week. Cause you have a birthday. One time for the birthday boy. Hey, two time for the birthday boy. Hey. <laughs> so what do you want to do? What am I going to do? Relax. <laughs> that's good. Relax. You know, that's that's ultimately what I want. I just want to relax, chill out. I'll have, have to some, drop have off some great day. food. Have some great food, you know, and just chill, not have to worry about anything. So that's ultimately what I'm gonna do. And on top of that, just be thankful. Everything's peaceful. Be thankful. Hey, I live to see 36. Yes. How <laughs> exciting. Yes, you deserve that rest. Okay. You really do. Well, it's about that time. It's about <laughs> that time. <laughs> Wrap it up. <laughs> the doors are open. Well, until next time, y'all, uh, it's been real. Thank each and every single one of you for just like spending some time with us in your evening because you could be anywhere. Um, so we definitely appreciate you for just stopping by and just listening to us share a little bit of knowledge and also just have another kiki every now and then. Uh, by the way, no, no pun intended, Kiki. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, thank you, uh, and continuously, thank you, Jolyn, for just you know being my my right hand and my left hand as it pertains to making this movement go forward. So, thank you uh, to each and every single one of you. Take the information in which that we discuss. Of course, do your own due diligence, but I don't want to say that as just like a caveat. I definitely mean that, like take the time to actually go and research, go look at the tools in which that have been given to the community and to the culture. And then on top of that, tap into the culture. So tap into the cousins in which that each and every single one of you, that's where Sector Sundays comes into play. And we know that we couldn't get Sector Sundays on last Sunday, but we'll definitely try to make sure that we get that for y'all on this coming Sunday, or I guess if that's what's happening this Sunday, I don't want to talk out of turn there. But for those of you, keep researching, keep learning, because the more you learn, the more you earn. Until next time, I'm Mark Monroe. 
And I'm Jillian GC in the place to be. I'm repping my stock bay down to the T. Somebody asked, what do you buy a millionaire for a birthday gift? Nothing. The only thing that you need to just say is happy birthday, because honestly, I'm just thankful for everything in which that I built, everything in which that I have, and also this opportunity that I've been able to share with each and every single one of you and help build. So there's nothing that you need to give me because there's nothing in which that outside of just this simple gratitude. So well, you better like the gift I got you then. Oh, of course I will. I want but... dramatics. Dramatics. Oh, okay. Well, I'm here <laughs> for it. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time, y'all. We'll see you next week. Have a wonderful weekend. Be safe. Be safe. Uh, hug somebody. That's, that's something that we ask of you to do. Just hug one person and be kind. We'll see you next week on Tuesday and peace, y'all.